Hello, I just thought I might make a little update about this big CNC machine because it's been about a year and a half, actually probably more than a year and a half since I finished it and I've been using it a lot so I know a little bit more about what's been working well and what has not worked well. Yeah, so as you can see there's a cover on here and I've been keeping it under cover after the first couple of months because I noticed that some parts of it were rusting at an alarmingly quick rate. Uh, the main one that consumed me was this and I've managed to keep that at bay by just greasing it up more regularly and there's also this which looks pretty terrible although the ball screw, uh, the ball nut can only get to here which is part of the reason why it rusts there not there um, and given that the ball nut can't come here I'm not, <laughs> actually not too worried about that uh, the rest of it's pretty pretty okay and we've got the same problem on this one uh, to a lesser extent I think because this is underneath and also on the other side of it where the ball nut can actually go it's pretty good, so I'm just going to ignore that. Um, I did have a problem in the early days with this uh, spindle cable. didn't like to be bent. And so I've just left it like that. It's been working fine. It's just sort of clamped on the side there and it's dangling, dangling up in the air. And it works perfectly well, so I've just been, been doing it like that. It's fine. Um, the bearing in the sparing block there, I tried to take that out and replace it with some proper opposing, uh, what are they called? There's like a pair of bearings you can get that are uh, better for thrust, opposing thrust, I, don't, I forget what they're called, sorry. <laughs> um, but the way I tried to take that out was by tapping on it with a hammer, and I think probably because of that, that bearing is now very rattly sounding and it's just sort of feels all jangly and loose. So the Z... Sounds quite nice. X is alright. But then this one. Sounds like something's loose in there, right? And it's all coming from that side, not the other end. Seems to be working fine, so it hasn't bothered me too much until now, but recently I got one of these. A little arbor press. I'm not sure if it's gonna be quite strong enough to do what I need with those bearings, but I will give that a try and see what happens. Um, like I say, we're getting into summer here and all of a sudden it's quite nice to be out here in the garage tinkering around. And so a lot of things that I should have done ages ago, like putting some lights up there, I have finally done. I'm really glad I did that because it makes it so much more pleasant to work out here. I should have done that straight away. Uh, as you can see, there's a whole lot of mess under here so there's other other thing that I should have done was put some shelves under here and just been too lazy but hopefully hopefully in the next few weeks or the next you know month or so while well, the weather's nice uh, I'll get around to doing that but um, main thing I'm going to try and do this afternoon is mount this vise in here that I just got until now I've been using this small I think it opens to 100 millimeters it's just a drill press vise and it's been doing surprisingly well actually but it doesn't hold things quite as nicely as it could. This bit rattles around and it also rattles like that and um, if you want to hold a piece straight well sometimes you've got to do something like that to to get the piece that you want to hold to sit in there. This is not what I was working on this was just like a, a block to help me get it straight. Anyway it's not ideal and for an upcoming project, I'm starting to think that I want to do things with a little bit more precision. The name of this thing, I guess, is that there, QKG63. And I paid just over 150 New Zealand dollars, which is about 100 US dollars, I think, for this. And I haven't really done anything with it yet. I've just had a quick look at it. But it seems to be quite nice. Uh, it's all covered with uh, slippery oil, of course. And what I'm hoping to do with that is mount this on the directly on the aluminium, of course, not not on the MDF which I've been using. I still have the same piece of MDF on here that I had originally. I've been too lazy to change that, and that's been working as working well anyway. But it is now getting filled up with quite a lot of these rather large holes that I've been using. These are 10 millimeter holes that I put to uh, put a 10 millimeter dowel in for double-sided operations where I'd need to have those pegs to like position it when I turn the piece over. 
seems to be quite nice. Now, I'm not really an expert in judging this kind of stuff, but um, in fact, this is probably the nicest piece of machined steel I've ever had my hands on, to be honest. And I'm liking it. Um, when I got it out of the box, the jaws were closed so that you couldn't even see anything here and of course you couldn't feel anything. I still can't feel anything even though it looks like it's open a little bit. Now for some reason when I opened it and then closed it again I can't quite get it to can't quite get it to repeat that like invisible line. So I'm not sure what's up with that. There's absolutely no play and yet hmm I like it. Okay looks like that's where it's going to have to go. This black line here is the uh, extent to where my end mill can reach. So it'll be the, the center of the end mill. So if we have a large end mill we could actually cut this MDF out a little bit further. But this is where the center of the end mill is going to go. And I want to have a little bit of room on the side here, maybe if I want to mill something on this side. Um, and it would be nice if I could make it put the vise here, like all the way back to there, because this is the side that doesn't move, right? So the only place I'm going to be able to clamp something is here, not here. So I might as well just, you know, shift the vise all the way back so that when I clamp it, clamp something, it's going to be still nicely within my workspace. But, like I said, this is where my end mill can reach to. And I want to use the end mill to surface the aluminium underneath the MDF. Because past Chris, when he was designing this, a long time ago, such a long time ago that I was still using FreeCAD actually, I was already thinking of like how I'm going to mount this vise uh, and I'm going to want to surface the aluminium underneath there. So for that reason the vise is going to have to go a little bit inside the line where my um, end mill can actually get to. Oh another problem I had that I should mention is that one of these proximity sensors stopped working. Well it kind of works like about 90% of the time but 90% is not good enough and when it's not working it just sort of seems to randomly switch off and on even when there's nothing happening like the the thing that it's supposed to be te detecting is way down here and it just keeps turning off and on. Um, so what I've done is I've just disconnected them and I disabled that the limit switch sensing in the z-axis in, li in Linux CNC and I've just been having to be a little bit careful with my vertical positioning. Uh, that was actually about two months ago and I kind of forgot about it <laughs> so I guess it wasn't super necessary to have these Okay, it's about a week later now. I got interrupted by Christmas and so on. And I figured since I was taking this off to cut a hole in it, I might as well just replace it completely. So I put a brand new one on and we have a nice big hole in there for the vise. And I realized that I have to use this old vise just one more time to make the clamps for the new vise. So these are going to be done just from a piece of 20mm uh, square aluminium bar. And this vise is all nicely lined up to cut some pieces out of the bottom of that. Oh, look at that, it's melted onto the side there where I didn't spray the IPA in time. Okay, so I've drilled and tapped my M8 holes in here. I've got my M8 bolts and made a bunch of these. And I was spraying some IPA on these most of the time. And this last cut on the side wall there is a uh, conventional cutting pass which uh, is a little bit inconvenient to be the finishing like the last one because if you forget to spray the IPA as I did on the first part of this one the chips all get squashed up against the side wall and it doesn't look very nice but I managed to get it right for the other ones and they look quite good um, so the plan was to then use the spindle to face off the middle portion of this where the vise is going to sit so it's going to be perfectly flat or square with the spindle but I'm just looking at it now and it's pretty good and when this MDF was off I checked the whole base of the table and it's all quite square and flat and looks pretty good actually so I think what I might do is just leave it like this and it's not perfect there's a little bit of so it's touching at the bottom there's a little gap at the top there 
yeah, like that, see? But uh, I think I think it'll do for now. And it's not too hard if in the future I decide that this is not good enough. I'll pretty easily be able to just take the vise off and face it, surface it anyway. And the other thing is that to surface it, I need to undo these bolts and slide the spindle down one peg on these uh, these positions here, which means that I might lose the alignment of it anyway. And then to get it back to normal machining mode, I'm going to have to slide it back up. So I'm risking sort of getting things out of alignment a bit by doing that. So I think I'm just going to take what I've got here, and that's going to be good enough for now. To get the vise nice and square with the table, I put a piece of aluminium extrusion in here. I checked that this is one of the straightest pieces I have and then I'm using a, an upside down end mill and I just let that rest on the side of the aluminium, run it over to here, position it again, put something so that that can't move there, it's just touching lightly and then bring it back here and make sure that's still touching lightly there and then I'll clamp it down. Is there a better way to do that though? Probably is. Okay, I have everything clamped down now, and I'm glad I didn't bother surfacing that area because when I double check now, everything is perfectly aligned, both uh, X, Y, when I run the spindle down the side there, and also when I put the spindle or the end mill on the top here and run it that way. I didn't use a dial indicator or anything, but just looking at it, there's, I just can't discern any difference in height or dis distance between the end mill and the top of this when I run it all the way along this like 60, 65 centimeters maybe length so I'm really happy about that and vertically what we've ended up with uh, see one reason to actually surface this area might have been to lower the vise a little bit but that's not really going to be a problem because uh, this is a 50 mil end mill there so we've actually got about 65 millimeters between the bottom of the collet there and the top of the vise so that's plenty for anything I'm going to be needing to do Okay, everything should be ready to go now, so let's try using this to make a part. Now these next two operations are the ones that finally made me buy this vise. There have been times where it would have been nice to have, but not really necessary. I think this time it would be necessary. We're just hanging on by a little bit at the bottom. Perfectly. <laughs> All right, so that worked out really nice. Uh, can't really see any problems with it. One of these sides is slightly thicker than the other one, I think. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. That hole down in there is for a 5mm hex head bolt that will sit in there like that. And there's going to be a pulley here and there's going to be a nut here that you can tighten to tension the uh, timing belt that this is going to go on. <laughs> 